All right, uh, welcome. Got a few people here already. So, the um, yeah, meetings are meant to be help sessions. I'm meant to be, you know, going my questions and stuff. So, um, I might not look here, but feel free to go ahead and get the ball rolling. If anybody wants to ask a question, I'll be happy to just um, go completely from, you know, talking about issues or uh, things I'm going to have. So, um, I was going to also talk about the problem set and the third quarter that I'm assigning right here. Most likely, I think. Let's see. All right, yeah. So if you have a question, let me know, type it out or just unmute. Um, I'll just start in a minute or two. I'll just wait until two there before I start talking uh, about things. So okay, so we're moving on here. It's it is two now. Um a few people here. Um, so as I was saying, you know, um, um, please just, if I get questions, these can be totally student-driven questions. So I will be having these help sessions on two on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, our class is a blended class. We officially uh, actually only have a, a session scheduled on Thursdays from like two to three thirty. Um, I will be in our um classroom on Thursday as well. Also Zoom it. So you have to go to the classroom if you want right to um in the session to the future of Thursday are probably optional but they mostly just you know kind of like a contact office out of the region to get questions or things. I love it. I really talk about stuff about class asking questions. So um let me see what that one number was again. Uh, I think it's a very like on um, the first floor, 109 or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably be over in the VA and have a class on the Thursday if it was not an official schedule here. Uh, uh, yeah, 2 to 3, I'd be at 109. So, yeah. Um, I, so, you know, I can talk a little bit about the problem set and the program assignment, which if you want to do, you know, um, and then we'll pop in with questions at any time, you know, get them out, or just unmute um, your mic. You know, so, as a reminder, to get the first problem set due today, um, and I'm going to be trying to grade these. So, you basically have uh, things due on. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday of each week. So Tuesdays we have a written problem set. Thursdays we'll have a program assignment, and then Friday we'll have a test over the unit. It might be five units. So basically, our units. Um, and we start with kind of an introduction, but for unit one here, obvious system concepts, um, and then we have processes and threads. Each one is kind of two chapters of our textbook. So. Uh, I think one of the three is on the currency issues, memory management uh, techniques for operating systems, and uh, process scheduling, schedulers, and scheduling issues. So, um, but like I said, these aren't going to be lectures. There are lecture videos on the course content that you um, that can for these that you can you should watch, and also you should read the textbook material. So, a lot of the tests questions and things from the problem sets come from the textbook. So if you want a, a careful reading of the uh, required textbook chapters, and so that's what we want. We we'll basically read um, um, uh, chapter one and chapter two here for the first week. So. Um, from another note, I'm kind of jumping in here and talking about the three problem set real quickly. So, this will be thick unless people ask questions. So, um, I mean, you know, for these five week sessions, there's no 
for some major assignments. So I won't be creating anything that's terminal related. So if I don't submit the first problem set today, I um, won't be graded for it. We also, we, uh, we also submit the first program assignment on the time to complete the, the test. Then on Friday, we won't get grades from it. And then we need to go back and do those. So, so make sure that everything turns out on time for the summer session. Um, yeah, I already brought up the problem set. So the problem set is from um, a discussion in chapter one. I'm just going to mention, uh, you should pay attention to, I gave a couple of the um, uh, oh, I thought I had the, uh, oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to mention a couple of things here that we didn't have in here. Uh, sorry, but, um, so just some hints. I added a few opcodes, uh, so I think I added like a jump and a subtract. Okay, so just two things: all these values here uh, in this hypothetical machine are hexadecimal. Okay, so uh, you should be aware of that, and uh, you should always be writing your results as hexadecimal values in here, right? Uh, and the other thing that I would kind of just mention as a hint. So that layer of there's also a defined format. So when we're doing adding and subtracting with integers, um, it is possible to get like a negative result. But, uh, our, our format for negative number, we don't use one or two problem, but we use a simple format and defined in this hypothetical machine. So the integer format is a simple sign magnitude. So the most important bit is a sign. So one for a negative number, zero for a positive. And then we have a um, uh, 15 bits. So this is a 16 bit um, architecture in my little machine here. So we have a 15 bits represented in magnitude. Okay. So that means, for example, the negative one. Um, so this is a bit of a but a negative one has a one um, for the most significant bit of the adaptives. 16 bits here. So negative one in binary looks like that, right? But of course you have to translate it into six decimal to put negative one as a result of a subtraction or something like that. All right, fair enough. There's no way to a question about the problem set. There's also a jump instruction in there. So um, you know, so our textbook talks about different kinds of um, Instructions uh, at the hardware level, at the, at the chip level for machines. So you have your basic um, um, things to move data in and out of memory, like web and stores. You have know, the, the arithmetic um, and logical instructions like add, subtract, or logic bitwise engines and all other things like that. Just add and subtract. We also have things that control um, the flow of control of the program, right? And, and uh, jump. This is like a, um, uh, a, a jump, an absolute jump here. So basically, what this does is it affects the program counter. Right? So if you have a jump instruction, it tells you to jump to an instruction, but it only addresses 300, and the program is changed instead of the accumulator being changed, like the ends of tracks do. So. All right, so I can put that for the mindset. Most of my else has a question. Uh, for guys, um, I mean, uh, I can't remember. So you're only done on like three instructions. So for some of questions, you might just execute the first three fetch execute cycles. Um, and then you'd be ready to execute the instruction at 403, but you won't have it. So, so for some of these, um, there's a full problem to have. For some of these problems, you might only fill in the first six, you know, the first three fetch execute cycles. Um, but in other cases with uh, jump instructions, and those can end up with an open loop. So in these cases, if you fill up all eight of these, all four of the check sheets, you have to do anything a lot. So, so, we, um, so either you'll fill in six or you'll fill in all eight for some of these. Yeah. Okay. Last chance um, for palm set. Um, 
a very popular bunch of the world. Um, I have started a playlist for the class here, so I'm recording this Zoom session. I'll put that up there. Um, and what other stuff I might be, but there's also a link to uh, the sort of official playlist of all the lectures, or uh, there should be links to the lectures and um, each of the contents as well. But, um, but um, yeah, if you go to the, uh, to the contents and look at the additional resources, there's additional stuff in there, which really looks through. You know, it looks like my connection is being pretty slow here. Um, 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 recording the stuff at home, I've only got like a slow DSL, so sometimes I have a problem with zooms and things. More than additional resources have stuff, including uh, hopefully this is the right link for the summer 2022 um, playlist. Plus, there's also a link about the normal canned lectures and things on here. And we to the Fisher Class Repository and some other stuff. So. But anyway, I just made the idea kind of, um, I think, here again, you know, ask questions. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to go off and answer some of that. But the video I posted just this morning, a little bit of 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 a little as I mentioned in my announcement, uh, you need to make certain that you've got your web box up and working by the end of the day. Okay? So either, either you need to email me if you have having problems, and I know you can have your web box up, or I'm going to assume that your web box are working and you can work on the first assignment and submit it when it's due on Thursday. Okay? So I mentioned that uh, uh, in this announcement here. So, um, so yeah, it would be um if you read through the instructions to get the dead box up, I'm gonna skip over that. There are some videos, so so this repository uh, is really a, a collection of stuff in order to get the dead box up and created. So that goes these steps you have to go get installed in a virtual box at big right? And then make over those again, there are some videos you can watch to do that on Windows or Mac OS, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of start. Um, at this point, where um, you know, I assume that you've got a dead box installed um, and running. And we're going to talk about this video that I put in that video that I put up there. So we'll talk about this a second because I'm going to unless I get some questions. Um, so um, um, you, you should always start and stop your dead box in the command line. You shouldn't. Um, there is a, um, I'm going to bring up the, um, um, you know, there is a, uh, a group for virtual box, and you could, in theory, try and start and stop your dev box once you've created from here, but you shouldn't because it's actually being managed by Vagrant, and this can cause problems, especially with uh, getting the files synchronized and things like that. So, so don't start and stop your dev box from the virtual box party. Um, always go to you know, open up a terminal and use the Vagrant up and down command. Okay. So um, I don't have my dev box currently running, so I'll start up. So I, I told you guys to figure the deploy or possibly put record for repos, um, I'm going to get the color boxes. But, you know, so it's a first step to run the bigger up and bigger down. You do have to change into the directory uh, where you clone um, your repository into this. So in my case, it's boxes, CSI, I feel like there's one type directory. In your, your best case, if you follow my instructions, you need to read those instead of boxes. But in other case, if you're in that directory, you can put the bigger up. Bigger down because she actually did much better bigger and um, I think it's an option that would really help. Right? So, bigger is a big kind of tool, it's not really the purpose of this class to learn it. But, um, so, I'll go ahead and start up my red box. Uh, we might get some warning, so. Um, Um, which can be fine, uh, but uh, 
But as long as you don't get errors, you're probably the point. So things are not fair when you do a better job. It's important that the report that you make to be informed and correctly. So you should see this live for the courts. It's also important for this class that your files are being synchronized. So they're being shared between the virtual web box guest machine and your host machine, right? So, so we're basically inside the guest. That folder is being shared with this is my host machine. Um, I'm going to use my host machine. 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 I'm going to use my host when your brand box is up, as we described here, you can go to this URL um, to get access to the um, um, to, to your, uh, your brand box. So there's a few code running here. Yeah, it's stuff running from before here. Something closes this for us. Like normally, when we first start it up, I don't remember what you were last time, but uh, the first time you start up, you're probably just going to be this to be to get the starting page. Okay, so um, so there's our dev box. I talked a little bit. It turns out, I guess, that there's no, um, uh, that the IntelliSense is actually working. I had some problems with it from a dev box from another class for the summer here. I think this one might be working fine. So I think I've got the correct combination of the um, Microsoft code sort of the web and the uh, IntelliSense. Uh, but, but to install that, uh, this is the last step that you have to do for this class. So you have to get this IntelliSense installed. Um, um, I guess there's one by one, but A was the correct one. To install that, you, you select your extensions, you have to go to the three dots here to get the additional um, option, and you want to install it from this file, right? So you say, um, I mean, the normal way you do extensions is you search for it, and then you ex install this extensions from the, the web, and the internet, right? Um, in this case, though, there can be issues. So you really want to use the one that was downloaded for you for this particular simple plus intelligence. Right. So, so just select that and start from this. Okay. So we should find it. So there should be a file called CPP tools by Shalom next up this IX. That's the one for us all. I've already installed it here. I showed that in the, the other video that I made already. So I think that's the only kind of setup step that you have to do from the assignments. Um, so once you have your telesense installed, the normal way to work on assignment um, is uh, you first need to open up the folder for the assignment, right? And, and you have to open up the correct folder. So you see, you need to go over to a file of the folder, or you can go into the um, If you have to buy anything open, if you go into the Explorer, um, you've got an option to open a folder or do some other stuff. So we can open the folder. So all the assignments should be in the sync. Um, um, assignment folder. And in this case, if you want to work on assignment one, you set the same one with that folder. Okay? And, you know, you shouldn't open up like the top letter directory. You won't be able to build quickly if you open it up here. You have to open up the particular folder of the assignment that we're working on, assignment one, assignment two, whatever. So when you open it up, um, it opens up that folder. You'll see all the files in the assignment. Um, so at this point, you can check, you should check that everything, the remote system is working correctly, so you can work on these assignments. So, um, so for example, um, you can always do this by hand. So if you have a problem with the IntelliSense or the keyboard shortcuts, um, you should always be able to run, build the system and run the tests from the command line. And there's some other things for this class um, that you have to do from the command line as well. I'll talk about that um, on Thursday a little bit, probably. But in particular, if you have um, like assignment one open here, so if you go and open up a terminal under the application menu here, um, It'll put you into your assignment, assignment one directory. And here you'll have all the, 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 the build system that runs from the command line. So basically, this works for building the assignments built into using the lake command, right? And we can always have my hand from a terminal, right? So these are all the things you can do with the build system. In particular, 
the, the basic steps you need are um, sometimes if you're having problems, you want to just do a complete clean build. So you have to do a clean every time before you rebuild, but, but you might want to make it clean to, to just leave all the um, executables and object files um, so you can have a clean build. Uh, make or make all um, or by default generate all you know, the executables and clean the test and send executables for them. So it shouldn't be any errors. When you do a make or a make on, what we'll see is it compiles the test into an object file, it compiles the text that consumes some error in this assignment into an object file, um, um, and then it links them together. So it ended up linking into you know, creating a test executable. That's what happened here on this link. And they created another object file and they created a sim executable. So it actually has two executables that you can see in the project the sim executable and the test executable here. And they can run the unit tests and the system tests by doing unit tests, right? Um, and uh, what's my scroll right here? Anyway, um, so that, that's just doing that from the command line, doing the hand basically. Um, if your internal sense is set up correctly, you should be able to. Um, do all those um, inside in this code. Um, so some typical shortcuts have been set up in order to do the basic build, clean up the test cycle that you need for this assignment. So control shift one, um, which I just did there, you need to be in, in the editor, so I have to focus on you know, the file opening the editor, focus in the editor. But if you want control shift one, it basically you can see it's just invoking and then like cleaned. Um, and then the control one. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, then control two, you should be able to make all the other thing. So, so control two, you should be able to make all. Um, and then control three, you should be able to test for you. So. There's my goal I was looking for before. All right. So you want to test that. Another thing you want to test out, you know, to make certain that your intelligence is working correctly, right? And um, you can see if um, um, it's running. So it should detect, like, you know, I haven't declared that variable X. So it should, you know, do a squiggle here and tell me that there's a I mean, right next to our X is undefined. Also, the class style code formatter should be set up for these assignments. So, if your IntelliSense and the code formatter is working, and the IntelliSense is correctly installed, if you type in code, if you don't give any space or limitation, and, and then whatever you say, it should format your file for you using the class style, the official class style of uh, formatting guidelines, right? So we'll see whether it will invent your code properly. So the um, class style is two spaces for every level of indentation, which will be white space before and after binary operators like um, um, testing or assignments and so on. And lots of other things you enforce by the style checker. And so make certain that um, you your C++ intelligence is working, um, but your code function on save. If it's not, you know, figure that out or shoot me an email. So again, if they're not working, you can always, you know, do it by hand. Um, and you should be able to. If, um, if, the, if the build system isn't working from the terminal, something's very wrong. So you can not get asked about it. But, but, but you know, if you, you know, I, I'm, I'm normally going to be a bit of a kind of working out. So if you need to, you know, 8, 9, 10 p.m. to work on a side of the line at 3 p.m. Uh, and you get stuck, you send an email, you might not get a reply until after it's already due, right? So, uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, you know, if you have a problem with in this code, you should always be able to jump down to a terminal um, and, you know, really uh, format your code, one of your tests. So, for that, actually, runs the, um, the C-Lang formatter to um, 
uh, from that and enforce class sideline line for the current. Tests actually runs uh, the um, unit test for you. All right. Um, so the timeline, they want to jump in. They have a concern or question here. You have to check my setting. That's hard to find the scroll over here on this. So, um, No, no questions. All right, so I'll talk a little bit more about the assignment one. So basically, once you get to that point, you're going to actually start working on assignments, right? So um, I mean, you can look at the um, description of the assignment by opening up the markdown file if you want to. Um, but the PDF is created from the markdown file, or you can't you can't view the PDF so um, 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 there's a few so, uh, you know, if they do it for the file browser in your system, uh, all these files are synced between the Wiki machine and the host machine. So, you know, every, everything you build, you should see here. This, this is my file browser and the host machine. They can also open up the PDF, which I will open up here. Let uh, me close off the problem, problem set file. Mm -hmm. Uh, so normally when you're on the assignment, basically you're going to have to go through and, and the, the, a set of things that you have to do called unit test tasks. Yeah, so you have to include all those. So there's like seven of them for the first assignment here. Right? Um, and the fifth one is to implement the initialized memory function. Now we started on this in the previous video. I'm trying to delete that and restart that uh, and show you. But, but before I do one or two more background things. So for all of our assignments, we a simulation of some aspect of an operating system. So when we study memory management, we're going to we're going to build a, a, a paging a simulation of a paging system. When we study uh, five, when we study um, job schedule, we're going to build a job schedule a, a, a dispatch your simulation to simulate uh, scheduling jobs. You know. So basically, for all these times, you usually have one class. Something in simulator, which is the main one. And then you will be adding do most of your work in there, at least for the first two or three times. Later on, you might be doing work in other files, uh, more work in some files. Right? And really, the, the, the way we're using C is an object oriented analysis and design for these assignments. So there'll be one big class. So, in, uh, oh, by the way, so um, for our first assignment here, we are actually implementing hypothetical machine simulator that we're doing by hand for the first problem set. Um, you know, the same one that's described in chapter one um, of the textbook. Okay. So basically, once this is working, you can run simulations where if you open the sim file subdirectory, the files like on program one sim. So this describe an um, initial state. This should be the same as the example from my textbook. Right? So uh, for this simulation, uh, the program encounters initial has a value of 300, a cumulative initial has a value of zero. We have a memory uh, that we're simulating that ranges from a base address of 300 to a uh, bound to, to the last address, what we call the bound address of 1,000. Um, and these are some of the contents of memory. So we don't specify any value between the and the sum. Some, everything we don't specify is assumed to be just zero. Like lock code, but things specify. So, like the address 300, we have the contents from 930, which is like a load instruction load from 930, uh, and so on. Right. So, as a result of building, uh, finishing the simulations, so for this first assignment, we'll be able to load one of these files and it will actually simulate running the type of the machine um, and get the results. You know, uh, what happens when you run this code starting at that particular location of the program pattern you know, with these instructions? Um, so, usually, what you do is, is not have functions that are left unimplemented. You have to implement the code for those as described, right? So, um, I already started on this on the, uh, the first video that I said here. So, I've already done this. So, I just repeat this maybe go just a little bit further. So, um, 
for the, the fish task, the, the fish task can be directed in the monthly initialized memory, and you need to implement it so that you can get, uh, you know, what your goal is to go back to the assignment one test is, is uh, you want to get it so that you're passing all these tests. And you don't want to go on to task two until you get all these tests passing for task one to initialize memory completely implemented correctly. Um, so essentially, initialized memory is basically so it's basically whenever this um, is um, encountered already in simulations, uh, we, we start with initialized memory. Um, you know, we set it up to have this base and bounds address, right? Um, and, and we do that for that. We read the next lines one by one to load in the programmer data that we're going to simulate executing with a hypothetical machine here. Um, so, describe, oh, by the way, you know, I find this outline kind of useful um, Visual Studio Code. So, here, you know, we have a file in the editor, um, every function, so every function um, should show up in your outline. You know, so, you know, instead of just going through there searching, you can look at your, your outline and, you know, bring it to the memory, you can find it there uh, and, and go to it there. Um, I think I mentioned here, um, you know, a couple of this kind of slide here, but um, I mean, Visual Studio Code is a very good um, development environment um, and editor. Um, it's been widely in the industry to get through the um, You know, I know that it's a huge bit of light, but it's not even sort of really although maybe I should make it right. Because I'm not sort of dark as that is what I have on video as light, but um, it's easy to you know go up to the um, settings over here um, and you know configure things and things and you know, the code that you want, know, including you know um, that um, um, easy way to change the basic things. You have a lot more things than these, but um, let's go to a uh, um, just the standard Visual Studio kind of dark theme. It might be a little bit too dark, but it's still relatively visible. I don't think I'm going to really like the model here. So we have lots of settings here. Um, um, so we have other settings. I might have to search for things. I think it's the link. I'm going to just turn that off. Um, yeah. So I don't like it. But another thing, um, you might want to increase your scroll buffer size. Um, but so um, for some assignments when you run the tests, you might get more than a thousand lines of output from running the tests. Uh, so we'll scroll scroll and turn them off there. So if you're looking at 10,000, that's probably big enough for most cases instead of a thousand. So it's a another good setting you might want to change there. So. Um, all right, anyway, so, so back to this. Um, let's say, uh, sorry, I shared this in the previous first video uh, just this morning. So let's, let's get these first two tests to pass. So basically, when you initialize memory, you need to get it so that we initialize the memory base address for our hexagonal machine simulation. And the memory bound address to be a thousand, right? Um, so those are just two memory variables. So the memory base address, memory bounds address, memory size, and some other things. Uh, but, but, but these two actually these three and memory also should be initialized in the initialized memory function. So I already showed this, but um, so if your intelligence is working, you should get you know like auto completion, right? So I so, want um, to initialize memory base address to be memory um, base address. So here, you know, again, this is kind of Cism, C C++ plus C, and actually C++ plus ism. If you're not familiar with this, um, so we're passing the DNA parameters on the base address, but we've got a memory variable with the same name, right? So within this function, this is a number function, initialized memory is a number function of the hypothetical machine, some of the class that we're creating, right? So there's ambiguity, there's two things, I mean, there's a parameter called that, and then there's a um, Number, 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 basically. So, so um, 
if you just do this and that's like the way that they must be thinking about what it taught me things. So I have to put some good anyway. So one way to do that is to say, if you say this number this mess, it matters that you want to grab the variable that they suggest. I wanted to assign it, but the value is passed in as a parameter. And okay? this is pretty common thing you'll see in number functions that are just initializing. So, we can initialize the number bounds address as well, right? Oops. So we forgot the uh, arrowhead there. So, all right. And um, another kind of thing here, I mean, you know, practice incremental code development, right? So don't try and complete the function before you write the test, okay? My only goal right now, just to get this first test, actually the first two here, I mean, I don't know about looking at my just. I should have just initialize the base address and make sure that test was passed in. And then initialize the bound address, make sure that test is passed. Uh, okay, but I'm initializing those two again. So now I will control set two. Um, I don't have to get my claim. So if I get my claim, it will just be built. So it only be built with a particular machine somewhere. It will not be fine because that was the only place between an eight. And that links together the tests again and also the simulation right here. I'm going to go and control shift three and throw my tests. Right? So you should always, so I always, as soon as I run a test, I always just scroll it back up to the top. Um, I wish there was a way to make a setting to have it tell me you know, when the open scroll might just stay at the top instead of scrolling to all the outputs of the but, but when you run your test, you want to look at the fifth failing test and concentrate on it. Right? So that's all it should always do that you're working on right now for these assignments. So, um, I mean, if they go back and look, so I don't as well as you know, so we're actually getting past 32 and 33, can you see that they're not failing? Um, and the first failing one is 34, right? Um, and I'll do one more here, and now probably the last paint on the memory size is um, another uh, variable, right? Number size it is another number variable where the HPP is a file. Uh, but we don't pass it in because memory size is a function of the base of the address, right? So if the, the, the bounds address is the last, the highest address is 1,000 and the base address is 300, I've got a city, I need to simulate 700 um, memory addresses, the difference in those two, right? That's where all memory size is. So memory size is just a function of. Um, the difference between the number bounds and the number base. Right. So that should initialize the memory size correctly. So you know, and that's what the tests are expecting here. Yeah. So if base is 300 and bounds is 1,000, it sh we should we need to set out a memory size of 716-bit values, basically, 700 addresses for a hypothetical machine here. So I'll do control shift two again to build um so um if you're confused by this, if you don't have focus in the editor, but this keyboard trick that's only working with have focus in an editor. So you need to come on here, control shift two, I have to be focused up here um, in, in a file. So control shift two just rebuilds the type of machine, and then control shift three should run my test again. Yeah, I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top. And my first down one is actually 51, right? So I'm actually passing all of these now uh, down to here, right? So there are a few more things you can do for initialized memory. Uh, these are described in here. I'm about to throw in this exception. Um, so basically, what we're checking here. Um, I probably should have added some tests here, but um, um, we're a little too late for me to have tests here. But, um, in front of the description of the assignment, um, we should be throwing an exception. We think we're going to get a random address that's less than zero. 
we're going to go to ten a thousand, which which I think was the purpose here. So so all the things like uh, the zero or two of the items up to a thousand a thousand one should be valid. Really a thousand shouldn't be valid, but I think we're only just a thousand dollars here. Because you know, um, you know if, if you look back on the chain of close on the top, if you look at the back the machine, uh, we only use um, um three digits. So the three text digits for the um uh, address. So the only thing zero 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 to nine nine nine. Uh, it would be a valid memory addresses in the textbooks type that the machine, which is all we're checking here. Um, and the other thing though is you also do have to initialize memory, and I don't want to go and test this thing, but later on, if you don't, yet you have to dynamically allocate memory, all right? So I'll actually show you how to do that, but I do put it in there. So you have to do that after you determine what the memory size is, and then simulate and then allocate memory. So that, again, if you go back and look at the click the machine, um, there's this in-pointer in any particular, right? But um, if, if you go and do the dynamic memory allocation, um, by doing something like this to allocate memory in C++, this file actually allocates an array basically of the size here. So if memory size is 700, this will create an array called memory um, that, that uh, is of size 700, right? Which means that um, after I allocate um, that array, then I want to do it. I can just go ahead. You can just go ahead and do that, you know. So uh, I mean, you do have to do this kind of memory allocation here. Um, after you do that, you know, you can you can treat memory, even though it's, it's, it's an image player, uh, you know, you allocate a block, it's really an array. Right? So I'm just number zero, um, something like a sign of value. Since memory size is like, you know, uh, if, 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 the, if the base address was 300, the balance address was 1,000, memory size should be 700. So that means the valid addresses are actually from 0 to 699. So uh, I can also assign something to the, the last one of this array. Anyway, so that's what's happening with that. Um, as it's described in there, we should initialize this memory. So after we allocate it, you should initialize all the values to zero. So that's been like, tested in the first set of all tests, but later on, if you don't do that, you're going to have some problems. So, so um, that, that is mentioned in here as well. Another thing you should be doing. And we also have to fill an exception um, uh, here. But there are some examples of throwing exceptions. So here's a pleasure we might want to do a search. So we can search for throw. Um, and see if I can find one here. So an example in the load program um, member, member function. You can do something like uh, all you want to do is throw a similar exception, um, and you can create one error message. So one way to create an error message is just to create a string, to specify a string. Um, but, but yeah, so let's detect if the uh, memory base or bounds address is incorrect, um, and throw that exception. So that's not the thing you're supposed to do in the initialized memory. All right, well, I'm not going to give you any more hints, so uh, but, but after that, you have to go into the translate address. Um, so the second set of bar tests. Um, um, are going to be done some things where initial have memory, but then cause translate address to, um, you know, test out. Uh, so we'll have one in translate address, uh, and then we'll implement the PPP address, and so on. Right? Ultimately, um, you know, you're going to implement execute, um, and execute basically um, is going to execute the next instruction in the instruction register, um, and then it calls uh, whatever the instruction is. So it's a load instruction in the instruction register, and it should be going to call in the execute load function. So we'll have to implement these um, specific um, ones to implement and subtract jump store and load instructions here. All right. Um, 
And first, I want to talk a little bit about, I want to talk about, about um, uh, how these simulations actually run in the um, system test. I want to talk about those now. I'll save that for a bit. But one final thing, I showed, again, I showed this on the video, but one final thing. Um, so we are ready to submit your assignment. Now, if you need to have your web box working, you can't do this if you don't have the studio code working with the web box exactly set up uh, the way I have it here. But um, to submit, you know, once you implement all these unit test tasks and um, you're ready to submit, you need to open up the terminal. So open the terminal and then, um, And this doesn't have a keyboard for so you can get any of from the terminal. But there's a uh, there's a um, part of it in the board system called make submit. This creates a file called silent one part at gz, um, which basically just collects together all the files. And that's what you need to submit for grading. Okay, so we've got all the graders set up for this class. I'm um, expecting exactly this file, with exactly the contents. Uh, that are specified in the link grade system to be uploaded to my So when you do make submit, we'll end up with, if you go back to your host machine, excuse me, if you go back to your host machine, you'll see if there's a silent one coming on GZ. So that's the file that, um, um, that the to uh, da, 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 where's my class? There it is. You know, so I'm going to have to change the doing this as a, as a student here. But uh, when we write submit, you can make submit to create that assignment one to the file. Um, and then we'll do an assignment. Um, Into the program assignment, um, and then we can submit um, a submit here by adding in that uh, assignment one. Um, file from your uh, file system, right? So, you can get this in boxes, boxes, and we're just shooting on those. Let's see if we have a Sims um, assignment. Assignment one, assignment one target dot gz. So that's the file that you need to upload for the assignment, something like that. All right, we want to ask a question. But there's some more about the simulations and stuff. I'm going to talk about that on Thursday. I'll be back for Thursday. Was a question or a concern or something? If not, if somebody speaks out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, in the session. I'm going to get this battle up really right for anybody who uh, didn't uh, watch it live if you want. So, all right, I'm going to email one question. Um, at any time, if you want to, but like I said, you know, can do it. You're working on the business hours, so you know, if you want to stop the right minute, you need to be able to answer it. If you have a problem, that's what things are due. So, try and just work on stuff with it. All right, um, you know, this is your last chance to ask questions about the uh, problems at this time today. So, um, All right, so we're going to end the session. Um, I'll see you guys later.